Now, South Africa has made international headlines with the Palapala Pala Farm saga. The arrest and extradition attempt for the Guptas and the release of the much-anticipated state capture report. What did this do for South Africa's image abroad? Well, to help us understand, Tsebo Matseba, a managing director at Reputation for his group, joins us right now. Tsebo, very good afternoon. Thanks so much for speaking to us. I suppose the first question is, is the world paying attention to South Africa? Um, uh, good afternoon, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes, definitely uh, the world is paying attention, attention to South Africa. If you look at uh, global headlines in major uh, media uh, platforms, um, the world is talking about uh, South Africa, and it's often most of those headlines are adverse and negative, and they have to do with the release of the state capture report, uh, which uh, most media houses call the corruption report. And the other critical issue, of course, is the, the farm gate uh, uh, issue in which um, the name of the President of the Republic of South Africa is consistently mentioned and associated um, with uh, those events that took place uh, in, the, in that farm. And so, um, reputationally speaking, this is, a, is something that is affecting uh, South Africa both domestically uh, because the trust levels uh, in domestically around citizens um, are beginning to drop. And then additionally, you, you have this uh, impact or perceptions that have been driven um, uh, that are affecting uh, most probably the investor community. Um, and then perhaps some, some travelers who may want to come in and visit uh, uh, South Africa. So it is not looking good for our country, at least in the short term. Now, what are the implications of the corruption that is evident in state capture? Yeah, so what, what that corruption does is that firstly, uh, if you look at, look at it in the context of our, our us being a, a, uh, a constitutional democracy, is that we have actually breached uh, the constitution. Uh, so um, uh, central to, to the uh, state capture scandal, of course, is the ruling party, the African National Congress, um, and uh, many of its leaders uh, are implicated, and uh, unfortunately uh, for the party and for the country, um, the party remains the biggest political party in the country, and as a result, uh, their actions um, are, do affect South Africa's uh, image um, uh, amongst citizens uh, in the sense that you now become muted to hearing news of corruption. It ends up no longer shocking you. Um, it, it becomes part of our daily uh, lives, and as a result, um, you are, we almost become what we, some often call the crime capital, and that we actually live uh, corruption on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, internationally, you don't have any investors who are sitting with capital, uh, who are willing to risk investing their capital or moving their capital to a country that comes across as if um, it creates a space for a greedy uh, corporates to come and loot uh, uh, in the country and for the various individuals uh, within uh, the structures of uh, uh, the African National Congress and of course in the public sector and the private sector to come and loot uh, the system. Uh, so levels of trust um, are depreciating significantly uh, over a period of time. And the, uh, the result of this uh, state capture uh, incident is that if we don't take specific actions uh, uh, to, so that we can see, and citizens in the world can see consequences, um, we are likely to end up with a situation where South Africa continues to be labeled as a, a criminal center, a center of uh, corruption globally. Well, you... You kind of took the words right out of my mouth, but I was going to say that isn't it positive that uh, whilst we had state capture, we now have this state capture report, which is almost South Africa cleansing itself uh, of the misdemeanors of uh, some of its government and, uh, and political uh, officials. Does that not hold us in or hold the country uh, in good stead, assuming that there are then arrests and persecutions of the same? Of course, uh, transparency um, in terms of good governance and transparency in the rule of law is a very positive thing for South Africa. It says that there is rule of law. Uh, in our constitution, we talk about everyone being equal before the law. And for that equality before the law to happen, it must happen consistently. In reputation management and branding, uh, the word consistency is important. That means you have to apply the same rules to everyone, irrespective of their stature or authority or their role in society or in business. And so unless actions tangible actions are taken um, against those who are implicated and that there's an action plan and that there's communication 
overall um, about what uh, the, the actions are being taken uh, by the law enforcement authorities, by the NPA, by the South African police, unless those actions are articulated and are seen to be articulated and applicable to every single implicated person, irrespective of their position. Unless that happens, uh, we are going to have a problem because that transparency is going to be diluted uh, by a lack of action or factionalism or favoritism or protection of certain individuals or groups based on their allegiance and, and, and the power that they may command uh, in different sectors of our government and different sectors of business. Uh, so the key word here is application of the law and applying that law consistently and showing and practically demonstrating to South Africans that we are taking action and we're taking that action swiftly. Sebo Matseba, Managing Director at Reputation at First Group. Thank you for your time this afternoon.